Almost a decade ago, South Australian grain grower Mark Branson was interviewed for GRDC's Ground Cover TV. Back in the 90s we were doing three to three and a half tonne a hectare. Early 2000s we were, we were doing um, four tonne a hectare and last year we hit a jackpot of, um, and got 6.6 .6 tonne an average wheat yield. What contributed to that increasing yield trend was Mark's use of precision agriculture and crop sensor technology, together with the adoption of nitrogen-rich strips, a crop fertiliser management practice Mark brought home from the USA after a Nuffield study tour in 2005. And this idea of the nitrogen-rich strip with the grain seeker is able to, con to confirm whether I need to apply nitrogen or not, and that's been a big saving on this farm. Enriched strips are a spreader width early application of nitrogen applied at a luxury rate, which is typically twice the rate a grain grower would apply. It's a reference strip the rest of the paddock can be compared to. The recommendations I'm getting from the paddock in behind me uh, is that I'm going to be needing 30 kilograms of urea in one part of the paddock and 140 kilograms of urea in another part of the paddock. It's one progressive farmer's approach to what the grains industry sees as a much broader opportunity. Identifying ways time-poor farmers can use automated systems and tools such as precision agriculture and sensor technology to improve profitability. So the Grains Research and Development Corporation invested in the Future Farms project. Now in its second phase, where four farm-scale core sites and nine satellite trials are providing data sets for computer modelling, CSIRO and its research partners are working to enhance the algorithms used in sensor technology to make them more applicable to Australian farming systems. The problem with those sensors is that the algorithms that accompany those, that allow you to generate a, a decision, First and foremost, they haven't been developed under Australian conditions. But the other thing is that they assume that the only thing that you need in order to make the nitrogen decision is the, the set of numbers that get spat out of the sensor. This research is advancing the thinking that a nitrogen fertiliser decision is a univariate decision based on the sensor values alone. The idea being pursued by the Future Farm team is a better prediction of the likelihood of a crop responding to additional nitrogen will result from combining a number of sources with the crop sensors data. Resources such as soil moisture sensors, farm scale strip trials and publicly available weather data. And also collecting soil and plant samples to calibrate the, the sensors. This combined data will better reflect the multivariate nature of a nitrogen fertiliser decision and allow the team to be more certain that a fertiliser application will deliver the desired response. To help assess that likelihood of responsiveness, Mark Branson's paddock was given enriched strips and zero N plots for reference and an array of sensors are being used to scan the entire paddock. Now on the Kubota we've got a number of sensors which sense the so-called normalised difference vegetation index, the NDVI, and variations on that theme. Precision ag researcher Andre Colasso now works for CSIRO, managing data collection and sensor calibration at both the South Australian and Western Australian trial sites. These sensors, they are measuring reflectance, so basically, basically reflected light from the, from the crop. So how do we turn what the sensors are measuring into something that is useful uh, for the farmer uh, to recommend nitrogen. By comparing the readings uh, that we're doing with the sensors in both uh, strips, the zero and the rich, can potentially predict the final response of the crop in terms of yield and protein concentration and so on. Other valuable sources of data include Mark Branson's paddock histories, and the part played by different soil types. The role of these other variables, the soil information that we're collecting, the soil moisture and soil physical uh, characteristics, uh, this will adjust, uh, let's say, it, it will adjust the sensor uh, algorithm to that environment. So that, that's why we, we're hoping that it will work across different environments and in different seasons, in different climates, because we're collecting all this extra information. And with that information, the farmer can then hopefully make as close as possible to an optimum decision 
in terms of his or her d decision to invest in nitrogen and get a reasonable expectation of, a, of the expected return from that investment in nitrogen. Before these outcomes can be applied on farm, the science needs to deliver the analytical tools and extend its scope beyond nitrogen application. And while there are a couple of years for the project to run, Rob Bramley believes the innovators could be applying the research sooner. A farmer like Mark Branson, who's been playing around with this technology himself for some time, he, he could potentially uh, adopt what we're doing quite quickly, particularly as he's got his own soil moisture sensor uh, along the fence here. Assuming the project is successful, there'll certainly need to be a little bit of development and extension beyond the research that we're doing at the moment before things can get adopted. What the Future Farm project is, is trying to do is exactly what I've been trying to do for the last 10 years. It's also introduced some new ideas to me, uh, like the zero, the zero strip, uh, and uh, I can see a lot of future in that because that gives an indication of whether the crop needs nitrogen earlier than what an end root strip does. For grain growers, nitrogen fertiliser is one of the greatest input costs they face. And as Mark Branson told Groundcover TV back in 2011, his use of precision ag and sensor technology allowed him to make big savings on nitrogen expenditure. Future Farm could potentially deliver a similar result for a lot more grain growers. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.